Well, I may have to do this again. Hey guys, welcome back to another random distractions video home theater update. In this video, I just wanted to do an update on the Arendelle speakers that I recently got. It was mentioned on the Arendelle website that the speakers needed a break-in period of around 50 hours or so, and I'm pretty sure that I've gotten past that, and so I wanted to run ARC again uh, to see what it looks like now. I also wanted to show the complete process that I go through for the subwoofer method that I chose uh, after I had run all those tests and I hadn't really done that where I show it from start to finish um, so I wanted to do that in this video. Although I will say again that I'm not saying that this is the, you know, the only method, the best method. Um, I'm just saying that for uh, my room, my setup, uh, after running all those tests, this was the method that I found um, gave me good results and was actually very easy to execute. Just to forewarn you though, I did run into a couple of hiccups and um, I am considering rerunning this process again, um, although I had already shot all this video stuff, so uh, I wanted to go ahead and share it now. So I felt the first step for me was to remove the current ARC settings. I opened up ARC Genesis and removed it. Since the current version of ARC was out of beta and did include the automatic phase and distances, I decided I would put myself out of beta and revert back to normal. This I did through the browser GUI. I had downloaded and was running the beta version of ARC, so decided to uninstall ARC and download from the normal download page and reinstall ARC. However, it seemed to run and look the same as the beta version. I then turned off my receiver and turned it back on and checked for an update, which it did have one. It went from March 10th, 2022 to August 3rd, 2022. I also reset the subs in the SVS app back to negative 15 on each one. I was now ready to run ARC and started inputting the basic information and was only going to do one measurement. I then put my microphone in the main listening position. And this is when I ran into my first hiccup, which was a critical audio problem. The good news is I had heard of this uh, before, um, and apparently it happens with this version of ARC uh, because I don't remember this happening when I first got the receiver and started setting it up, uh, but it apparently happens when you don't have an ARC file on the receiver itself. Um, so I pulled up the last ARC file that I had and went ahead and uploaded it uh, to the receiver and tried again. This did in fact fix the critical audio issue. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I also wanted to detail the subwoofer method process uh, that I go through. And so the first thing that I do is to set both of the subs to negative 15 in the SVS app. This of course gave me the error that it was too loud. While you do have the option to ignore this message, uh, when I did this previously in my test, I found that it just turns down the subwoofers like way too much and it doesn't sound good in my setup. Instead, what I do is I try to lower it down. First, uh, kind of a big jump and then uh, one dB at a time. So at negative 15, Arc is saying that sub one is too loud by 12 dB. So I reduce it to negative 20 in the SVS app which is only 5 dBs, and try it again. This time, it says it's too loud by 7 dBs. But rather than trying another 5 dBs, I just start to reduce by 1 dB. So I reduced it to negative 21, and try it again. It says that it's high by 6 dB, so I reduce it again to negative 22, and it finally goes through. This is interesting because technically it should still be 5 dBs too hot, but it does go through. Last time I did this, I had gone down to negative 21, so it was a little louder before. Then I do the same for the second sub. I start at negative 15 and it says it's 14 dB too high. I reduce to negative 20 and it says it's nine. I reduce to 21 and it's high by eight. I reduce to 22 and it's high by seven. I reduce to negative 23 and it's high by six dB. I reduce to negative 24 and it's high by five dB and I reduce to negative 25 and it finally goes through. This is interesting too because it let it go through with I believe negative 4 dBs instead of negative 5 like sub 1 
And last time I did this, I had gone to negative 24, so also a little louder previously. So previously, both of the subs were 1 dB higher than what they are now. And the only thing I can think of is, um, I know uh, some people have mentioned that the Arundels, once they loosen up a little bit, uh, the bass response may be a little bit better. Um, so maybe that's why uh, they don't need to be as loud uh, now. <laughs> but that's just a guess on my part. What I do find interesting though is that it doesn't have you go down to zero or you know where zero I think would be when you lower it down the dBs because um, like I said it felt like it was still probably 5 dBs too hot for one and about 4 dBs too hot for the other one. So that's basically my subwoofer method process that I use. Um, like I said in previous testing, this was you know the one that provided good results and was very easy to execute because all you have to do is kind of lower the volume a little bit at a time until it finally goes through and then you can move on to the next step. After this, Arc does the distances and this is where I ran into my second hiccup. It stated that the distance measurement failed. I clicked on retry two more times but kept getting the same error. Now this one I had not heard of before or had run into before. Um, so it, the only thing that I could think of was, you know, I didn't put in the actual distance uh, in the initial prompt uh, because that is one of the things that had changed in the beta and in this uh, version or the final release of it is that you now have to put in the distance uh, for your front left speaker. Uh, but I honestly thought that that was optional. So that's why I didn't put it in. So I went ahead and restarted, but this time put in the distance uh, for the front left. And this time the distance portion did go through. I was finally able to move my microphone to the second position. My second spot is about two feet from the main listening position and forward a bit, but between six to 12 inches lower than the main listening position. My third position, which is also about two feet from the main listening position and also a bit forward, this is also between 6 to 12 inches lower than the main listening position. For position 4, this one is a little behind the main listening position and about 2 feet away, but about 6 inches above the main listening position, and that is only because that is as high as I can get the included tripod. Similar for position 5, it's a little behind and 2 feet away from the main listening position, and also about 6 inches higher than the main listening position. After it was done, I did want to go ahead and save this baseline measurement, so I uploaded it to the receiver, and the next step would be to do the automatic phase. Uh, this meant I needed to move the microphone back to the main listening position. I then ran the automatic phase process. After that, I saved the file as the baseline. Next, I know that my favorite setting from my previous run was with a 3 dB boost in room gain, so I made that adjustment and uploaded it to the receiver. Because I did make a change, I reran the automatic phase adjustment again. I noted in previous tests that a changes do affect this, so it's worth to run it after making changes. So now I had a baseline and a plus 3 dB room gain file that I could work with. I decided to run the same tests that I had done before, which were the standard sweep, pink noise using the RTA, and the Dolby demo using the RTA. As suspected, I liked the version with the plus 3 dB room gain, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and compare the measurements uh, that I got from my main listening position. First, the sweeps. Comparing the baseline between when I first got them to now, the measurement looks a little smoother now. Comparing the plus 3B room gain between when I first got them and now, there is a little more variance, and to be honest, I'm not sure which one looks better. There are some gaps at around 115 to 250, and then again around 700 to 1300. Second test was the pink noise test. Comparing the baseline between when I got them and now, there is a dip from around 130 to 250 now, but after that it seems a little smoother. Comparing the plus 3 dB room gain between when I first got them and now, the new one looks smoother and there is still a dip from 120 to 170, but it's a shorter range. So just looking at the measurements, you know, I wasn't uh, thinking like, oh wow, there's a really big difference uh, in a much better way. It was kind of like up and down through uh, most of them. Um, however, for the Dolby demo, which is more of a real world uh, feel, I wanted to see what that looked like uh, compared to the previous ones. 
Comparing the baseline between when I got them and now, it's smooth, but also louder than before throughout most of it. Comparing the Plus 3B room gain between when I first got them and now, it's also louder for the most part than what it was before. Now those tests are done with the microphone in the main listening position, um, so it's just from that one spot. Um, so I thought I would show what, you know, ARC showed, because uh, I do have the previous baseline file and then whatever the current baseline file is, uh, which should show the measurements uh, totaled up uh, from all the different positions uh, that ARC measured from. So here are the base files. First, the front left. Between then and now, there is an increase in bass, and the rest seems to smooth out a little. Similar for the center channel, here's the before, here's the after. As well as the right channel, here's before and after. Surround left had less changes, it seemed like, so here's before and after. Same thing for the surround right. Here's before and after. The one thing I will say about this though is, and I've mentioned this many times before, I'm not a pro and I'm doing these tests in my living room so it's not a controlled environment in any way. Um, so being able to put the microphone in the exact same spot uh, that I did previously um, and then, you know, uh, sound is a physical th thing even though we don't see it. Um, it's still, you know, waves of sound that are coming through so depending on that day uh, there could be, you know, changes to that. Uh, which is something that I uh, always remembered from a sound engineer that told me that uh, to remember that because that's why uh, mixes may sound different uh, from one day to the next uh, because uh, it's still a physical thing and so it might change just a little bit based on you know what's going on. All that to say is I'm not 100% sure what the accuracy is as far as these measurements go uh, but I do still find them interesting to kind of look at. Personally, to my ears, I don't know that I notice too much of a difference from before to what it is now. Um, all I know is that it still sounds great, uh, so I'm really happy for that. Uh, but I know some people like to see measurements, um, so that's kind of why I included them uh, on here as well. I did also want to mention that I had a comment from one of my viewers uh, for a suggestion to try. Uh, basically is to run ARC, you know, get your uh, file, and then go into quick measurement and making sure that ARC is turned on, run the subwoofers, um, take a look and see if there's any dips uh, in the uh, frequency range, and then use the SVS app to EQ out uh, those dips, um, and then rerun ARC uh, with those EQ settings uh, in place. Unfortunately, this is where I ran into my third hiccup and I was not able to fix it. I went into the quick measure tool and pulled up the subwoofer, ran it. Um, it was making sound and I could see, you know, the frequency. And I'm like, well, it doesn't look too bad, but I'll go ahead and try it. Um, so I stopped it, went to grab my phone, open up the SVS app, and then I went to quick measure and there was no sound. Uh, I tried a different speaker uh, to see if it would reset itself and then went back to the subwoofer, still no sound. I exited out of ARC uh, and then, you know, came back in and still no sound. So, um, not sure what happened. Um, if anybody has run into this uh, issue before, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I was not able to, to get it to, to come back. However, I had achieved the main goal of this video, so I decided just to leave it at that and, and move on. Because I did run into those hiccups, especially that last one that I couldn't fix and couldn't try out James' suggestion, I am considering uh, resetting the receiver to like factory reset, basically as if I just gotten uh, the receiver and was doing this for the first time. While doing this video, I'm also thinking of doing one more test uh, in regards to the subwoofer process. And that is when, you know, the Arc Genesis tells you that it's a certain dBs too hot. Uh, what would happen if I did turn it down exactly that many dBs um, and see what that sounds like. So for example, the first sub uh, was saying that it was 12 dBs too hot at negative 15. So I should have turned it down to negative 27, uh, which would have been zero dBs. Like I said, I'm just wondering what that may look like. Well, that is all that I had for this video. I would definitely appreciate a like course on this one. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.